Hey YouTube, Point Shooter here. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Swiss Army Huntsman Boy Scout Edition. Now this is a very special knife to me. I've had this knife for uh, probably about 13, not quite 14 years. I got it when I was very young, when I was a Cub Scout way back in the day. It was a gift to me from my grandparents and as you can see it's seen a lot of use. It's gone with me on many hikes uh, and when I was a kid uh, whenever I get home from school, this would be the first thing I'd put back in my pocket, right when I got in the door. So I have, this is a well-loved knife. Uh, I've added a key ring to help attach lanyards to it, but other than that, it remains stock. Uh, I've got a couple interesting ideas about it, which we'll share in a minute, but this, uh, this knife has been a great companion in the backwoods. So let's talk about the, uh, the features. It weighs under 4 ounces, right around 3.6, 3.7. Uh, it's got uh, quite a number of implements on it, and we'll do a little comparison and contrast here. One thing that I like about it is, let's take a look at the main blade. Everything on here is highly uh, rust resistant stainless steel, and uh, despite all the use this has had, the blade is actually uh, almost a mirror finish still. We have, uh, it's a spear point, flat ground, takes a very fine edge, and it's very easy to sharpen. I don't know exactly what sort of steel it is they use, but it works and it's never rusted on me. We've also got a smaller blade. While the main blade was around a little under three inches, this one's right around the two inch. It's the same, it's just a scaled down version. Flat ground takes a great edge as well. Uh, I find myself using the small blade less, because most of the time I just uh, head for that nail nick on the large blade. So let's talk about this, the driver bits. You've got on one side, you've got the Victorinox can opener, which you've heard me refer to many times in my videos, with a screwdriver tip. I like that in comparison to like the Gerber that you just saw reviewed. The Gerber tip uh, is just sharpened, and it would be always nice to have an extra screwdriver on there. Maybe they could have used one of the smaller screwdrivers uh, instead of having a separate screwdriver on the Gerber, had another blade, but I guess for uh, copyright or patents, they may have had to deal with something else. Take a look on the other side here. And you've got the large flat driver with a wire stripping notch and a cap lifter. Uh, I've used the cap lifter many times, and I've also used the can opener many times, and they both work great. They work just as designed. The screwdrivers are great. Uh, I like these because they're so nice and polished. They're like the Leatherman, um, but they're a little bit smoother, and they tend not to jigger up your, your uh, screws as much. Now I'll talk about one of my favorite tools, the saw. This is an excellent wood saw, and I've used it probably uh, more than any other tool except perhaps the knife. Uh, this saw really cuts quickly. I'm going to compare it to my Leatherman saw, which I've, you've heard me mention before. They're very similar. They're both of the double-edged variety and they're both about the same length. Uh, in terms of which one is more solid, they're really about the same. Uh, this, the uh, Leatherman is only slightly thicker, but really not by much. Uh, they're really virtually identical. The next tool we'll talk about are the scissors. Again, we're going to do a little comparison with the Leatherman here. The Leatherman scissors are just about the same. Let me pull them out here for you. They're virtually identical. Leatherman scissors are a little bit longer. Again, you've got that high mirror finish like Victorinox does on all their tools. Uh, one thing I like about the Leatherman is that when it closes, look at how the spring folds in there. With a uh, Victorinox, and this is true of the small classics and of the large as well, that spring can tend to wear out. Or it can, like just right here, get off center and then you've got pliers that don't work. You have to bend it out occasionally. You can buy replacements. What you do is you open the tool halfway, take a nail or a punch and punch out that uh, that uh, spring. I've done it before on my smaller Swiss Army knives, but never had to on this. Uh, as always, keep your pivot point oiled up. These scissors cut real well. Never had to sharpen them. They work great. Now let's take a look at the Phillips head. That's about a P2. It really does not fit smaller screws, but uh, I've used this to take dry, drywall screws, anything of uh, any large size out. Uh, you get a lot of torque behind it because you can turn it with the whole handle, and I like it a lot. We've got a hook as the next, a sewing hook. Never really had any use for that. To be honest with you, I don't knit or do anything like that. 
Uh, occasionally, I've tried to fish a wire through somewhere and use this to pull a wire through. Uh, but normally, if I'm doing electrical work, I've got a fish tape or a fish tape puller, so that's what I normally use for that. Now, one of my favorite tools, which I used a lot as a kid, was the leather punch, the awl. What I really think uh, Swiss Army gets right on this is the awl. They've got the nice sewing hole here, and I'm going to compare it with the awl on the juice. Look at the awl right there. It really rocks. See on leather, it just just kind of goofy that it's flat and then has it rolled over. Uh, it's not sharp. You really can't put that much of an edge on it. But this, this will cut you. Uh, this is sharp enough. It's not going to take the hair off your arm, but it, it'll cut. And it uh, does a great job of boring holes in wood, which I've used it for quite frequently. Uh, if you're going to set up a snare or anything like that, this is what I'd prefer over this. Of course, on most of the Swiss armies with the plastic handles, you get a toothpick. Got the tweezers. Tweezers work real well. Uh, I've considered now that I don't carry a classic anymore. I still usually have a pair of the Swiss Army uh, tweezers around somewhere in my bag or on my EDC gear because they just work so well. Let's talk about the locking of the, the uh, tools. Real firm, no play. You can baton with this smaller wood, but of course, watch your fingers or else you can get them caught. Again, out in the woods, I always prefer a locking blade, but you don't always have to. If you're just doing small camp tasks, it's not really necessary. With the saw, one thing you have to do is be very careful not to get it too aggressive with it. Uh, it can bend, and I'm sure it could break if you put too much force on it. This is a perfect gift for uh, a young child who's maybe reaching the point where they're responsible enough to start carrying a knife. I know it was a great leap of independence for me was to finally have my own pocket knife like this. I've definitely enjoyed carrying it and it still usually rides in my survival gear even though it may not be on my person when I'm camping. It's usually somewhere within my gear. Although to be honest most days I've got my Leatherman or my Gerber with me. I usually prefer to have the pliers. Unless you go with a mechanic model you're not going to be able to get pliers out of a Swiss Army knife. However this is almost half the weight of the Leatherman juice. Uh, about two point, uh, no, I'm sorry, the XE6, which is the larger version of this, is twice the weight of a Swiss Army knife. If you go for a smaller model like a Spartan, you're going to get pretty light, around the two, two ounce. This is just about 3.5, 3.6 ounces. It's not very heavy. Uh, on a key ring, it works great. It's a little large for, for my purposes, but uh, I carried it for many, many years. One of the things that I have noticed is that the blades are, they hold a fairly good edge, but you do have to sharpen them every so often. Uh, we'll talk about the main blade. It's flat ground, which I prefer. You can see there's some wear on it. Uh, what I think happens is that the steel, it's its like 420, as I've always mentioned. It, it, uh, it does not hold the best edge over time. It, it won't rust, but it definitely uh, is not my top choice. Again, but if you were going to make it out of 154 cm, it would be a lot more expensive. You see these uh, usually in the 40 to 50 dollar range. Sometimes less, sometimes more. It really depends on where you're looking. Uh, this was bought, as I said, almost 13 years ago. So I don't know what it was priced for back then, but I think around 40 dollars you can find these normally. Of course, you can put any manner of uh, lanyard on it that you want. So overall, for a Boy Scout knife, it does come without the Boy Scout logo. That's This was just a uh, commemorative knife. Overall, this is a great outdoor knife for uh, doing your food prep, camp tasks. It's not something that I would use uh, for hardcore survival, but it would make a great EDC as well. It has a lot of tools on it, and if you don't feel like carrying around a multi-tool or you feel you don't need pliers, this would be probably all you'd need for an EDC if you don't mind uh, having to use two hands to open it up. So I hope you enjoyed this review, and uh, stay tuned. You'll see a lot more coming. Take care, and God bless. Bye.